Now I'm going to talk about the most important things you need to know about fossil fuels. And one of the fun facts about fossil fuels is they were not uh, formed from dinosaurs. Uh, we actually believed oil came from dinosaurs through the 1980s when it was discovered it did not. So one of the things we're going to talk about is what are the origins of fossil fuels. So we have three different fossil fuels on planet Earth. Oil, natural gas, and coal are all of our fossil fuels. They're hydrocarbons. That means they have components of carbon and hydrogen. That's the chemical energy that they have stored in them, typically harnessed through combustion. So we're typically burning these for an energy resource. We only have a certain amount of them, at least on human time scales, and they occur in sedimentary rocks. And we'll talk about why. The reason it's in sedimentary rocks is because the way we get our fossil fuels is we take organic material, that's our biomass, that's trees, plants, sometimes, you know, marine organisms. We squish it with time, temperature, and pressure over millions of years. So we're talking long time periods, 100 million, 500 million years, uh, high temperatures, high pressure. We're squishing that biomass and forming our, our fossil fuels. Our coal comes from woody planting material, the stuff from swamps and deltas and squished over time. Oil is from marine microorganisms. So you might think about this impacts where we find our coal and our oil. It has to do with when and where those kind of biomass resources were from. Natural gas can come from either. Much of it comes from the same source material as coal. It also can break off of oil. It also can come from other sources. So natural gas has a little bit more of a diverse uh, places it can be found on planet Earth. So just to visualize this and what does it mean to squish biomass into our fossil fuels? For coal, it's literally 20 meters of that woody planting material from swamps squished into a one meter thick coal seam. And so you can see where we get the energy density in our fossil fuels from squishing that chemical energy from that biomass into our fossil fuels. So hydrocarbons, our fossil fuels, they go from something very simple like natural gas, which has four hydrogens and one carbon, a very simple molecule, all the way through oil being longer chain hydrocarbon, so a lot more carbon per, per molecule, all the way to coal, which is just, just kind of conglomeration of everything that was in that swamp squished into a solid fossil fuel. Coal becomes very high carbon intensity. When you're burning it, you're not getting as much energy out per CO2 that you're emitting in comparison to the, the natural gas or methane that has a lot of hydrogen bonding for each carbon molecule. So you get more energy out per carbon or CO2 that's emitted when you burn it. The other challenge with coal, because you squished all those the swampy material into a rock and you're burning it, it has everything else in it too. It's not just the hydrocarbons. So it tends to have a lot of heavy metals, sulfur, um, you know, radioactive materials, things that we don't want in our environment that can go up in the stacks when we're burning it, or it can be left over in the ashy material that doesn't burn. So it makes it much more challenging to deal with uh, in that sense. All right, so I wanted to talk to you about how do we classify how much of this we have. And there's something called the McKelvey diagram. The McKelvey diagram is just a classification of how do we talk about these stock resources that are depletable? How much do we have? How much can we get? What does that look like? So there's several levels to this McKelvey diagram. The biggest level is the resource base. That is all of the resource that is in existence on the planet. To our best guesstimate, we obviously don't know, but we can make really good guesses on how much coal, oil, natural gas exist on planet Earth. Then we take a subset of that, and that's the technically recoverable resource. That's how much we can actually get at with today's technology. And obviously this can change depending on how technology changes. We might be able to get more in the future as technology changes. Then there's a smaller subject that's the reserves or sometimes called the economically recoverable reserves. And that's what we can get at a profitable level. What can we get with today's prices and today's technology? So what do we can get the profit? And then the final piece, which is a much smaller piece is what we call proved reserves. This is what companies can actually add to their balance sheet. These are much closely monitored and they have to be proven. You have to have already 
dug the well or put the mine in or something like that in order to show that these reserves exist. They can be recovered at current prices and with today's technology. All right, so that's kind of how we think about fossil fuels and how we characterize them. Why do we care about fossil fuels? They are what we get our energy needs met by today. So what I'm showing you is a bunch of pie charts. On the top, we've got energy use for both the world and the US. The bottom two charts are a subset of that. That's electricity generation. Fossil fuels really dominate both of these right now. We've seen a lot of movement in electricity generation. So we are seeing that percentage of fossil fuel come down slowly, but it is still very much dominated by fossil fuels and has really been for over a hundred years. Uh, since we really discovered coal and then after that oil and gas, it's really driven our economy in terms of our energy needs over the past century um, and probably will for some time into the future. So we talk a lot about getting off of fossil fuels to decarbonize our energy systems because of the environmental impacts of these fossil fuels. It is a question of how quickly that kind of uh, change is going to happen. Our fossil fuels also differ in terms of what we use them for. So coal in particular is, it's a solid fossil fuel. Uh, it's very stable. It is pretty much just used for electricity. It is used for a small amount of industrial heat, uh, particularly in steel making, because it also can be for coking, things like that. But coal is really used for industrial, electricity sector, primarily for those things in our commercial energy systems. So that's what a coal is used. Oil, on the other hand, is really about transportation. And so here I'm showing you how oil is used in the US, just as an example. But much of that, that quarter that's for industrial heat is used to make the transportation fuels that's going into our transportation system. So when you think of oil, really think transportation. It is not used very much for electricity generation. So when we're talking about decarbonizing our systems, oil is not competing with solar or wind or, or batteries and things like that today. We have to change our transportation system to an electric system for those fuels to actually start competing. Then natural gas is our, our most diverse fuel. It is used for heat and in industry. We know it's used in residential and commercial. We use it for water heating. We use it for cooking. We use it for space heating. We use it in our electricity system. We use it in a very small portion for transportation. That's mostly to transport the natural gas itself, but it's a very diverse fuel. Um, and it's used in, in a lot of different sectors for different um, human uses. All right, and I wanna give you a sense of scale of who are the big players in these different fossil fuels. So I'm gonna show you three different charts of the top producers of each of these fossil fuels. They also give you a sense of who the top consumers are. So here I'm starting with oil. The United States is both the top producer and the top consumer of oil. Uh, you can see our, our production has grown over time. We actually became a net exporter just a few years ago. Uh, we've been a top consumer for a long time. We consume around 20% of the world's oil. For coal, China is by far the number one producer and consumer. You can see a lot of growth happen in China uh, starting in around 2000 um, to really become the top producer and top consumer in China. We're seeing a lot of growth right now in places like India and Indonesia, but you can see it's really dominated. The space is really dominated by China. And then natural gas. Uh, the United States is also the number one producer and number one consumer of, of natural gas and recently one of the top exporters of, of natural gas as LNG. Uh, so again, a, a big player in this fossil fuel. So let's end with talking about the environmental impacts of our fossil fuels. I've tried to summarize them here, so there's a lot going on, but I just wanna give you a sense that all of these fossil fuels have environmental impacts, some of them more severely than others. Coal in particular has a lot of air pollution impacts in comparison to oil and, and natural gas. All of them have greenhouse gas emissions, but again, the, the carbon intensity differs. So again, coal is kind of the loser on that end. It's the most carbon intensive of our fossil fuels. And it's the one that really has the solid waste 
the radioactive solid waste, the high uh, metal level uh, solid waste that we have to deal with. So we often are thinking about climate change and some of these, these global um, challenges with our fossil fuels, but they have a lot of other environmental impacts that have to be considered, they have to be mitigated, those risks uh, have to be managed. To give you a sense of scale of that, um, this is just drilling down to our fossil fuels and how much they contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. You can see almost half of it is from coal. Um, and of course, fossil fuels account for about 70% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. So it's a big portion in what we're talking about in terms of climate change. And following the, the development and the Industrial Revolution, um, the use of those fossil fuels um, and industry uh, emissions of fossil fuels and, and greenhouse gas emissions um, have really increased over time. And so I'm showing you two charts here to give you a sense of how that differs, um, where we are today and where we look historically. So today, China by far emits the most uh, carbon dioxide um, as the most potent greenhouse gas um, today. But if we look historically in terms of how regions have contributed to CO2 emissions in the atmosphere, the United States and the EU still by far are the highest cumulative emitters of CO2. And this is important when we start talking about policy and how do we influence decarbonizing a lot of these systems. Finally, I just wanted to drill down again and as an example for the United States um, that we have a lot of other legacy environmental issues from our fossil fuels. This is just listing, I know there's a lot going on here, a few of the uh, legacy issues that we worry about. But if you think about the whole energy system, there are impacts both in the mining and drilling part, in the transportation part, in the use, and in the disposal of waste. And so a lot of these issues, especially as companies might go out of business or go bankrupt, we've seen that a lot in the, in the coal industry in the United States, a lot of the cleanup of these issues fall to state, local, and federal government where they have to manage these legacy issues um, from the use of our fossil fuels. So I, I like to give this perspective that it's not just all about climate change and we don't necessarily have the price of all, dealing with all of these issues uh, wrapped into the private cost of these fossil fuels that we're paying, whether it's at the pump or in terms of our electricity use for coal. So it is an additional social cost that we're having to pay through our government systems. All right, I'm at 13 minutes. So that was uh, my intro to fossil fuels and we'll get into each fossil fuel in a little more depth as we go through our weeks. If you wanna check out other things about um, this lecture, or you wanna see the full lecture, uh, Jane Woodward actually gives it on our website. So you can go check that out. Uh, you can check out some other short videos that we have about fossil fuels. And of course, I encourage you to check out our newsletter.